As an mechanic for all these years, you work on bikes and you try to do the best you can meticulously to detail and try to make everything just perfect. But sometimes at the end of the repair, you have a hang up. This one is a stem that's cracked that I didn't notice until the sunlight when I was taking pictures. I got a replacement, but we'll explain some hairy details after this. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with the guy. Hi, I'm Justin the guy. Obviously, I have a garage shop. Taking scary how to use bikes one bike at a time. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. Welcome back to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging with the guy on this old bike series. I'm Justin the guy, and we had a little snafu on this particular classic Zunau. Reason being is, you know, you work on something that's vintage and you just come across these little hang-ups and the hang-up on this one is the stem. Right here we have a nice little crack that goes all the way through. Yes, the stem needs to replace, but if you don't notice right now, the stem itself will stop. So they stop making these for a reason because when you adjust this, it messes up its brakes. Ah, what's the fix? Well, the fix is a $5 part with $8 shipping. Um, <laughs> this is basically a cable guide or cable stop, and it goes into the threaded headset spacer. So basically, you replace a couple of spacers with this little gem here, and that's where your cable stop is. Okay, this is actually an upgrade. I know it's a classic to Chelly stem, but <laughs> crack stem or not, it's still a paperweight at this point. So I need to replace it with a new stem and have this cable rerouted underneath. Oh, how do we get these stems off? Hmm, this is the pain in the arse. You know what I'm talking about. We need to unwrap, take the shifter off to be able to slide the stem off and on because these stems don't have the modern day dual bolt pattern. I do have another one, it does have a, a dual bolt, but I'm trying to keep it as authentic as possible, so I'm replacing it, replacing it with a, a 3T stem, which is within the same era-ish, and therefore, there's the conundrum. Yeah, what it would take on a new bike, like a couple minutes, is going to take me a little bit longer than a couple minutes. But a couple things to review. Stem replacement swap for the old quill, one inch. Headset spacer replacement with a cable stop. And hey, can you rewrap those bar tape that you maybe fuddled up putting on in the first place or somebody else did? Sure, we'll review that too. Let's dive into this bad boy. <sighs> Pardon the interruption, there is more. More you say? Push the more button. Push it. Push it. I dare you to push it. Once you push that button, you get more details about the video you are watching in addition to all the tools that I use in the shop as well as suggestion for improving your ride. In addition to, to help me provide advocacy in the cycling community, also links to other social media accounts as well as my website to find the products that I actually sell and other insights in the industry. Other videos linked below, extend your cycling experience here on YouTube. And now back to your original programming. So first thing, we're just going to have to just pull this cable out and, uh, you know, this is something that I was like, I was proud of doing and getting it done and whatever the case may be, but we're going to have to do that. And to do that, I'm just not going to cut it. I'm trying to resave this cable that I just put in there. So uh, first you need to release the brake. Ugh, these brakes are usually really tight, ah, like stay. And can't really see you. Okay, so releasing the brake, so this releases this bad boy. Then I kind of fold this bridge cable. Yes, that's what they're called. It's a bridge cable out so I can get to the bridge hanger. And these bad boys is a 10 millimeter and you usually use a socket. So you open box wrench to hold the back side of this and then you use the box wrench portion to loosen it up. There we go. So it's loosened up and it has a fancy little Shimano stamp on the front here to go with the Shimano brakes. How do we get move these 
cable ends without fuddling up the cable. Well, you can just take pliers here and how it's crimped. It's crimped in one direction and I can just smash it the other to open up the gap. Also diligently and boom, slides right off. This you can't really reuse. Good thing I have another green one somewhere. So there we go. There's the bridge cable hanger removed. Set that in a safe place because you know you can't find those really easily. And I'll throw this up. And I think the housing luckily is long enough to go into that stop. And I'm not sure. Yeah, this already has a threaded one, so I don't need this portion. So how this guy's gonna look is you're gonna thread it through here, like so. And once we get it in place, double check it and the housing fits right in there. So this is a bigger gap. So I'm gonna put an actual sleeve on top of this to make a you know, professional touch. Next is, hmm. Well, what do we need to do next? Well, let's let Ray unwrap the tape. This is where you, if you just rewrapped your tape, you can unwrap it most of the time. Some tapes have a really sticky back to them and they tear even if you just put it on there. So this does have a sticky back to it, so you have to be kind of careful on doing that. So I'm gonna remove my electrical tape that holds it in place. I'll be recutting that and getting a new one. So you can kind of, uh, it all gets bound up anyway, like so. So there's my bar tape and I'm just gonna take my fingernail and peel off this guy. That goes into the trash. So here's my little trick, it's sticky tape and you're trying to take it off in one fell swoop to replace it or to reuse it. You wanna put a little tension on this, kind of a little tug. When you're doing that, as you're giving tension, as you're pulling it around, it's kind of pre-breaking that sticky, because it's shifting it a little, so it's not pulling it directly up, it's kind of pulling it to the side, therefore, it's not gonna tear off, most likely. And in this case, we have to replace the whole tape on the whole side of the bar to get the stem off, and we gotta clean everything off too. So we're gonna have to go all the way around, there. So when we get to the plug, I press that in. So I'm gonna to try to gently push this out without scarring the tape if I can. So, and also not just force the pull to tear it, so. Oop. You can hear that little thunk. There we go. So we're going to save this, set that aside, and save my little back piece. Now we're free to move the shift or the shifter brake lever, but we need to get this, cut this electrical tape so the housing, be careful not to cut the housing. Like so. Okay. So we're gonna take this electrical tape off all of it. So, because this has to slide all the way around. And these are always, bit, and there's a reason why there's a front load stems now. Because doing these back in the day was a pain in the keister. Not easy then and not easy now. So now uh, it's free enough that I can get into my shifter here. Loosen up as much as I can, if not all the way. You may not want to do it all the way because you may have some gunky stuff and this band is really hard to do if it's singular. So if it's connected to the shifter, you got some hand leverage to kind of cut it out. So this is just gonna chill, lay down to the side. Don't let it get kinked up too much. Okay, now we're ready to take this bad boy off. So, now this is going to be a six millimeter on this guy. And I'm going to use, instead of a Y wrench, I'm going to use one of these fancy new Allens that I got. Fits in the place, it fit really snug. So I can get leverage. All right. 
And the wedge seems to slide right down, which is pretty good. Now I got to do the squeak, 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 squeak. Oh, there we go. All right. Now we want to make sure we don't lose track of where these cables go. I'm going to try to keep this in all in one piece. This is a six on the bottom too. Various stems may vary uh, on different types. And you want to back this out all the way. Um, this is an interesting one. So it has a, let's have an internal wedge. Because usually they have a cut gap, like this guy. And you would take that all the way out and wedge a screwdriver in there if you need to, a flathead or a, and you see how it's just, <laughs> it's only going on one way. <laughs> it's like, it's like a, uh, you know those memory puzzles? Because these are tapered. Mm. Oh, it's just, okay, it's tapered on the bottom, okay. And yeah, it's only cracked on one side, so. And I can see the crack since I did loosen it up, and I'll show you here, it's kind of disappeared. Oh, okay, so. Oh, it is a wedge. Yeah, very interesting. There's a little wedge piece in there. Over design for the period of time. Anyway, um, so yeah, you got a little, see if that little wedge piece in there that presses this guy out. And here is, you can't see it now because there's no pressure on it, but that crack was popping open when this was tightened. So apparently when I tightened this to secure it, it bloop, popped that up and this is just a decal. There you go. You can see the inside of it now, the Tuchelli. So, yeah, shame, shame, bummer. But anywho, on to the next. Should have wore some gloves on this, didn't I? Didn't realize I'm so greasy. All right, on to this next stem. So hopefully I don't have any terrible time trying to get this guy on. Hopefully it's a wide enough gap to make the turn. Okay, woo! And make sure you get it on the right direction um, because you can get it backwards pretty easily. And this guy has a crazy little Allen in here that I'm not sure what the purpose of it is, but it's preventing me from opening the gap. All right, so I need to get this over the sleeve. The sleeve of the handlebars here. All right. And this is usually a muscling situation. Oh, there we go. Okay. And here we go. So when you're putting these on, for the with quill, you want to put a little bit of grease on these guys because that's where a lot of rain, sweat, especially sweat, when sweat drops down in there, we're talking about aluminum with a steel steer tube, it likes to seize up. I've had to cut out a few of these in the day from people that sweated immensely. Oh, oh whoa, whoa, hold the phone. What we forget to put on? This guy, all right, back up, back the bus up. Boop, 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 boop. I'm gonna set to the side and hopefully I don't get grease on my brand new shirt. Like the shirt? Yeah, yeah. All right, so going to our, I think it's a 32 mil, 32. We're gonna loosen this lock up, lock nut up. Remember we had some issues on the former video of repacking the headset. Okay, so this is going to be about six or seven threads in, like so. And this is keyed as well. So we're going to try to replace the spacers. Because if you put this on here right now, it's going to be not enough threads for that to lock down. So you got to swap it out. This goes with a lot of head stem swap outs. If you're switching out a different stem, like a headset, there's going to be a different thickness to it. 
And sometimes you got to be mindful of what shims you put in there to be, make sure it's safe. So I want to make sure it has, you know, five or six threads. I think just replacing one is good. That looks pretty good. This guy's going to like to walk. They, remember, the back of the stem is... So I'm going to swap this out and put it in the middle setting. Why? Because I'm trying to get that, this down as low as possible so there's less arc of the cable. Even though it might be just, you know, a few millimeters. Sometimes a few millimeters is a huge difference. Ugh, come on. On these guys. Ugh, ugh. And now it's fighting me. Time for a little bit of... Well, wedge action lightly. Just kind of trying to pry it over the. There we go. And slide this back on. And so the key portion on these guys is kind of. Uh oh, dropsies. Not a notch, it's flat, which they don't make the shims like that anymore. So we're going to have to. Tap this guy back in place. Come on. It's tight. All right. <coughs> so here we go. So if I put it on there without the shim, it's going to go flush and pop the seal off. So I don't want that. So I add another. I think it's a 2, 2.5 shim on there. And I think it's going to be fine with that spacing on there. And we want to make sure that we're not cross threading this bad guy. Okay, there we go. So cross thread, we're in a booger of trouble, a world of hurt. And again, this was very snug. So, I mean, it's, it slides through as a thread, but. It has a little bit of ump to it, so I need to be able to... Oh, careful not to drop my tool on my toe. Ow. All right, maybe I'm going to go with this angle. So I secure the wheel and all this. I'll show you with my hand. I have this hot mess underneath, right? So try to secure that so I'm not scratching anything up or getting greasy everywhere. And... This shouldn't mess up with the adjustment of the headset, but you want to, you want to double check when everything's back together. All right, now I'm starting to feel it kind of bind. Boom, okay, we're in position. Take my rag, wipe off any <laughs> crease that I got everywhere. Yucky. All right, now, since we have that in place, slide this back in. Do, 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 do. There we go. Now I'll probably, once it's on the floor, it's easier for me to adjust it, but I definitely want to get it to the height limit line down in there. So now I don't have to worry about that. Use all parts of my body to get this to work. And you tighten this wedge. <laughs> you kidding me. It's just free floating in there. Back out again. Inspect the wedge. Okay, it's in there. Well, why are you not wedging? There you go. I feel it engaging this time. I got my fingers all greasy again. Okay, now since we have it lined up, you feel that wedge engaging, locking it in place. All right, so we're about halfway through now. So we only had to take out one of these guys, and now we need to get the shifter back on there. You know, the one I just laid down there so gently, ever so gently. 
with the housing. Right angle. All right, I think we're doing good. Get the housing back in there. Okay. So, get my tool back in here. What I forgot to do is I should have marked it and taped it. You can use a ruler. Some people don't have very good light and eye of sight. So, put it here line it up. I do have a tool for this. So I've customized this thing and you know it's kind of irrelevant for the newer stems and bars out there but since I live in the bike market that was 10-15 years ago so this really kind of fits my wheelhouse. Okay so it's basically just a gauge to guide it. And I need to use a long Allen so it doesn't interfere with the tool. So what I'm looking here is spacing on this. Very smart. I used rulers as gluing this all together and marking. So I kind of gauging the shifter levers to the same height equal to where the plane itself will hit. Then I adjust the angle that matches the other side and it is about as close as you're going to get to being equal on both sides, like so. Fancy little tool. <laughs> that was about four hours and about $20 of PVC, part, <laughs> PVC plastic. So, all right. So, got the new stem on there. This guide is a little off, so we're going to tap that straight because the key is not quite center. There we go. Now I can, and I'm not going to do the housing op, up and over. That's not clean. And I'm also going to put a little housing sleeve on there. Which is these little guys. The reason being is that is a um, adjustable barrel adjuster, and when it bind, it'll bind up on the plastic sleeve portion here. So if you put a metal cap on there, and I just lightly crimp it so it holds place. You can also we used to use like a small torch and melt them on there. That's kind of hazardish. I'm going to thread this guy through. And then I'm going to take a look and see where we're looking at it angle wise. So, kind of, kind of a lot of loopy going on. That has a pretty good angle. Maybe I will go up and over. Because you want the less pass, path of resistance than it was traditionally like this anyway. So, There we go. So I think that's a little bit of a cleaner look. So kind of up and over. If the stem was higher, I'd go underneath, but since this is aerodynamic and tapered down, I'm gonna go down there. Alright. Now since we're here, we're gonna put our bridge cable guide back on. And find the right tools for it, wherever they went to. All right, so these guys are kind of tricky. The person that put this together was incorrect because I put the cable on the outside of where the Shimano is. You see this hook, there's a guide cut out. That's where the guide and the cable's supposed to go through. Basically, it's put on backwards. Will it still work? Sure. As good as, perf you know, as it should? No. So these guys are really tricky without trying to fray anything. So you thread it through, if you can see, you kind of push it over the center, and that's where you want to do your adjusting. Since now we have a shorter gap here, we're going to have a lot longer cable, so we're going to end up cutting that. And we go ahead and tighten this down. 
in the place just to hold it for right now is we're going to get this cable guide back over or the bridge cable back over so this is a tricky little threading so you can go under push that cable over so you can hook it hook it like so then you get the other piece over and usually you'll hear a little snap like so oh and you see I got accidentally got the housing in there so this housing is going to need to go up so I need to undo the bridge cable again all right thread this through so the housing is up out of the way and you get your cable guide below all that so you're if you're turning or whatever you're not going to be causing your brake to engage which should be not a good thing so you get the housing in place loosen this bad boy up get it up a little bit higher back in the day they had fancy little tools that would be guides those are long gone I'm sure you can probably find them somewhere but they were all weird anyway so I'm going to place them with this bridge piece to be above the tire so it doesn't catch on it, which it is. I need to put it low enough so it's below these housing because if it's above it, that causes interference. So you want this to be above in the, this portion underneath. So it's really tight tolerance is what we got going on here. But we want it above so you have clearance, which there's plenty here. Then you tighten the leaving the bejesus out of this so it doesn't slide. Like so. So when you hit the brake, it's working. All right. And now, since I, if it's slack, you can adjust it by this little barrel adjuster up here. Lock down the lock nut to make it more engaged. Make sure everything's tight. Cables are tight. Cables are good. Then, if you can see, you take this cable instead of straight down and put it off to the side Boop, like so sometimes you can loop it around and you can adjust the brake almost by pushing it back and forth so we're looking pretty good for what it is so you want to put this all together and make sure it's all secure and ready to go and adjusted before you wrap your bars wrapping the bars is the last thing you're going to do so you want to Make sure everything is good because if you go and you're like, ah, oh, crap, I forgot the cable or whatever, you don't want to have to rewrap that again. And, you know, yeah, you can probably get away with rewrapping them, um, but the problem is with bar tape, you only get so many tries. And after so many tries, it's going to fail, and all of a sudden you're buying some new bar tape. So on these guys, I like to cut it about two to three inches out, which usually was the norm back in the day. And then I put my cable in on here. And these particular pliers or cutters from Park Tools have a crimper. <clears throat> nice little flat crimper, so it's all professional looking. Ah. <sighs> Those away. This away. Ah, now for wrapping the bar. So it's kind of like, I've done this already before. Why am I doing it again? It's kind of like you're just uh, going in circles. So first we need to secure this brake housing down so it's out of the way. So we're going to cut a couple strips to uh, secure it. And you start 
securing it starting from the brake lever over. That's your first contact point that you want to place it. And the second one you want to adjust here. And once you do this, you want to check your brakes again and your shifting and all that. Reason being is the angle on this and everything may change the tension of the brake, but I think we're good. It's it's functioning correctly. And the shifting in this is I'm not worried about, but definitely the brake. All right. I about panicked here. There's a little line that you'll see right here. <laughs> that was another crack. I'm like, I just put a stem on there, it's cracked again. No, those are indicator um, for the 3T, or yeah, 3T um, stems. They have bars with, with hash marks. You can kind of measure it out, kind of deal. But so now we're ready to wrap that side. So take about a foot, make a cone on that side there. I don't worry about the plug right away, that's the end part, but I do want my little short sleeve that goes right here. Secure that in my mouth. Yeah, every one of my bikes I work on, you have a little bit of my saliva on there, but it's undercover everything, so don't worry. It's not gonna be any more nastier than your sweaty hands. Anywho. We find a section that we did before, it's all crimped down. And we try to repeat the process that we were there for spacing and everything. Get my hair out of there, that'd be kind of weird. So here we go. Try to re mimic what we just did or undid. So I don't care how good you are, you'll never get this to the same spot. So you want to try to span it out a little bit further, less tight, so you can have a little excess. I'm actually a tad short. So what I'm going to do is back this off and just add a little more spacing here, where I think I kind of lost a little angle on that one. There we go. It's going to be more equal. And you want to keep them equal going around. Somehow I made it worse. How's that even possible? Okay, there we go. And you can thin it out through here. The most of the weight is gonna be on this portion or down here when you're actually riding. And most likely this bike will be put in a museum anyway, so not too terrible, it just needs to look good. <laughs> just kidding. It's gonna look good and be functional. All right, so there we have it. I take my tape, a cone underneath, so when I pull it and stretch it, it doesn't leave a little weird lip to it, and bam. I go around four or five times, and each time less tension, so the tape itself, I mean, I stretch it, so the less time I go around, it spans out, and uh, that way uh, it just has a nice, even look. And the last lap that you do on this will be very minimal tension, just enough to give the curve here. So it just looks nice and clean. That's where you get that nice, clean, short width tape. Some tape jobs that people have done are just, they go over crazy and you see this huge bump of tape. Um, it does, you know, less is more when it comes to this. And uh, I do the cone thing again. Reason being is these corners, you don't want it to flare up and I try to get it to go underneath. So it's clean like so. And after that, we just put our plug back in. We fold that excess over like we did before. Make sure the logo is properly placed and push that in. Whew. Not too shabby, huh? Not, not too shabby at all. 
redoing something that I've done already once before. So there we have it. Replace the stem and I'll put it on the ground and do all my adjustments, the tightening, that kind of thing, make sure it's all ready to go. But everything is laced and replacement. Yeah, something so small could be such a big and a pain in the arse. You know what? So keep in mind, when you take your old classic relic like this to your local bike shop and you talk to the mechanic and go, hey, can you just swap that out? Keep in mind, after watching this video, you know it's just not a quick, quick do. If they're doing a whole bunch of other work to your bike, yeah, it's the time to do it. When it's all stripped down, when they have to replace it anyway. But this little bad boy, or that one over there, no bueno. But anywho, this bike is almost ready to take off the open road, finally. Tell you what. After doing all these little extras on this particular bike, it took me over five to six days to complete this thing. Way, way beyond. So this has basically been a refurbish, definitely spectacular bike. It's awesome, um, but it is what it is. Anywho, until next time, thank you for hanging out with me in the garage. And if it's nice in your neck of the woods, go for a ride. Have a wonderful day.